Well, you guys, today we'll take a look at your own private network attached storage solution by Ugreen. This is the NASSYNC DXP480T+. Plus. This is a brand new NAS to the market. This is exactly what you're going to get inside the box when you purchase one. You're going to get all of the information manuals. This is your user guide, your quick start guide, your warranty and stuff like that in this little pouch. You can undo this and it will all be tucked in there. Let me just quickly show you the user manual. It's in color pictures and also English text as well as other languages as well. So it's very easy to understand and set up your own personal NAS. Also in the kit, you're going to get a nice Cat7 Ethernet cable by Ugreen themselves. Also, you're going to get your power adapter here. Everything seems so premium quality. Everything has been built to a very high standard. And we've got the barrel connector on the end here. And we have the actual unit ourselves. We do have a screwdriver here and also some thermal pads for the NVMe drives, which are going into this. And I do have some which have been sent over by Ugreen themselves, which are these Western Digital Blues. They're only one terabyte each, but it will get the job done for what I need to show you here. So Ugreen has sent this out for a view, uh, but all my opinions are my own and no one is reviewing this video before it's released. So this is the actual unit right here. As you can see, very good build quality. You've got your power button on the front here made of aluminium you've got some ventilation sides here and ventilation on this side here now also on the back here this is where all the business end is we've got some ventilation at the top we also have our ethernet port here now this port is a 10 gigabit ethernet port here as well and we also have our audio input here next to that we have our hdmi port sports up to 8k and then we also have our usb 3.2 gen 2 port here which supports 10 gps speeds and then we have our thunderbolt four ports on this uh, particular one we have two of those as well we have a reset button and a power input here now of course this means you can plug other devices into this for more external storage if you wanted to on the bottom we have some ventilation and two fans and access to the actual drive bay here so let me remove these two screws here so we can gain access to the bottom Inside here is where your drives are going to be. This is a metal plate here, and this will press down onto a thermal pad onto the actual drive itself, and it will act like a little vacuum chamber in here, blowing air across these to keep them cool with these two fans here. And uh, you may be wondering, uh, will this uh, device get hot? But you can see the air is going to be blowing into here, and this is where we're going to end up with a nice little vacuum chamber building up in here to keep the actual drives nice and cool plus they're going to have thermal uh, pads on them and plus they're going to be pressing up against that metal which is also going to help dissipate heat inside this actual device so things should run pretty cool here we have room for four drives here uh, there's no other drives you can add in this apart from these four uh, NVMe drives I'm going to put in these four one terabyte drives here obviously you'd be using a lot more storage than what I'm using here this is for tutorial purposes but it does say you can have up to four terabytes times four on their website and you can run these in JBOD uh, basic RAID 0 or RAID 1 RAID 5 or RAID 6 or RAID 10 depending on what you want to set it up as so I'm going to go ahead and screw this down and we'll also put the thermal pads on here and then we can then start to think about uh, setting this device up. Now the processing power in this is a, a Intel 1235U, and this is a 12th gen Intel Core i5 10 cores, 12 threads. Now it comes with eight gigabytes of DDR5, and this can be expanded up to 64 gigabytes of DDR5. Now this does have flash memory system disk inside, and I'll show that a little bit later on, which is 128 gigabytes. But we can take a look at that once I take the unit apart so you can see inside. So let's go ahead and get the thermal pad on here. So I'm just going to stick these down on all of these. I won't bore you with this process. I'll just quickly show you one of these so you get a general idea of what I'm doing here. So I removed the plastic on the bottom and then you have to just remove the plastic from the top. And that will be the thermal pad on top of the memory here. And this is going to press up against the actual um, metal plate here which is going to help dissipate the heat on these NVMe drives so I've now gone ahead and 
put the thermal pads on all four of these and you can take a bit more time putting these on a bit more nicely but we're going to go ahead and put this down on top here so once this is pressed down here you can then put the two screws back in and we're ready to put in the ethernet cable and then we're ready to put in the actual uh, power for this so we can power the unit on now you can set this up via a mobile app if you wish or you can set it up on your desktop I'm going to be using the desktop method but you can choose whatever method you want to set up your NAS so I've got the ethernet cable plugged in the back and that's going straight to my uh, modem router and we also have power to the device and I've now powered on the actual uh, device here and what you need to do is open up your browser and go to find.ugnas.com and push enter and you should now find your NAS on your local network. Once you've done this, you can now click on connect and you will see it will ask you to give it a name. You can leave the name as default, but I'm going to call this ugreen underscore NAS so I know what it is. Give yourself an administrator name. So I'm just going to call this one Brightech. And then you need to give yourself a nice strong password. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And we can move on to the next step. Now for more security, you can enter in your phone number and a verification code here to tie your phone to your NAS. Or you can jump past this stage if you wish. Setting up your updates, you can obviously set this up for automatically install only important updates. And you can set this up how you like. Your recommended one is the top one. But there is some uh, other options available here. You can also share your device analytics data with Ugreen if you want to. You don't have to. But if you want to, you can check mark that box there. And then once you're happy, just click start using. Now, obviously, this is a very early access uh, model. So I need to do quite a bit of updating uh, to the firmware and stuff like that. And that way, uh, I will be able to show you what I can do here. But first off, let me go ahead and use the management here to set up the drives. So you've got all your usual stuff you would have on any other NAS. You're going to have all your update and restore, all of your control panel, your storage management. And again, I'm going to set this up one up here uh, to create our RAID. So let's go ahead and I'll talk, talk to you about how to set this up. All you need to do here is click on the start. It's very easy to follow along. Choose uh, your RAID type and you can see there's a bunch of different RAIDs here. This is only a raid 5 setup so i'm going to go ahead and click on the recommended raid 5 uh, down below here is where you can select your drive so i'm going to select all of these drives here uh, to have in this uh, raid setup so let me go ahead and just check mark these so just check mark these ones right here and click on next and once that's done this will uh, set up our drives and our volume for our nas so let's go ahead and do that it's going to ask uh, to wait and it's going to erase all the data on the drives and get these prepared for you. So I'm going to click continue. And once you're done, you should see something looking like this. So let's go ahead and leave the file system on BTRFS. You can change that if you wish. And we're leaving it as the maximum storage space available. Then we're going to go for the next step. Don't worry about the Chinese uh, writing up here. That's because I haven't set up. Uh, the actual format inside the settings and I will do that after this uh, update here so let me go ahead and put my password for validation here and you should see something looking like this once it's all done it's in sync and we're now working with our NAS so from here obviously you can create users and start uploading content to your NAS you can sync your phone to it you can install applications like docker and other programs that you want to use on your NAS. You can also use other operating systems on this particular NAS if you wish, as far as I know. That may change later on, but I'm sure at the moment you can install other operating systems instead of using Ugreen's own operating system if you wish. But at the end of the day, it's a pretty decent operating system that Ugreen have here. And like I've said, you can also use the application for your mobile phone. Works on Mac OS, Windows, web, and also iOS and Android. So if you want to run it from there, you can do. And you can also log on via your desktop PC. Now, Ugreen are completely new to the NAS market, but they are doing plenty of different models for you to choose from, whether you want mechanical drives or NVMe type uh, NAS storage. They do plenty of different ones here. Very large storage devices 
The ones I've got is the one in the middle here, but they have a two bay here, four bay, and they also have six bay, and also they have an eight bay. So depending what your needs are, will determine which one you go for. And they have a 35% discount because all of these are still in Kickstarter right now, but they are going to be released and they're still updating uh, the apps on these and some of the settings and the firmware on these. So what you're seeing here is quite an early access. And also you can see the pricing here will change depending on uh, Ugreen and when they release them. So as you can see, there's plenty of different uh, specs to choose from and loads of applications will be coming real soon. Now, this is just an overview video of this product. We'll hopefully revisit this uh, product later on down the line, and I'll show you some of the other things. Let me know in the comment section below what you want to see with this particular NAS, and I'll be happy to make those videos for you. But if you're looking for a NAS that's built really well and has pretty high specs, then something like the Ugreen uh, NAS is a pretty good option. This is the DXP480 T Plus, but they have a bunch of other ones available if that's something you're looking for. Just rolling up here on the screen so you can see some of the specifications here. I've already gone through some of this in the video, but I just wanted to show you the Kickstarter page here. Now, what I want to do also is show you inside the actual unit itself. And I've also now updated all of the firmware. So we have the very latest firmware available for this model. And I've set up all the language and uh, all my preferences the way I wanted them. So it looks exactly how it should do now. Uh, and this was how it would look when you purchase one of these. It will be delivered to you exactly like this with all the latest firmware. So you can see we do have a control panel here. And there will be more added to this at a later date more than likely and there'll be more features being added to this all the time because it's still work in progress. But here is the about page. This gives you all the specifications for this particular unit. It tells you what uh, system version we're running here. And it also tells us the capacity of memory and everything else here. You've got all your system restore and reset, configuration and backup and restore right here. You've got your hardware and power, all your time and language, and also networking settings right here, your security and stuff like that so just as you would with any other nas here this is where you can change all of your language to whatever you need here and this is where i changed it and i also changed the system uh, language back to uh, english here but you have all your buzzer and fan control and led lights here you can control all of that inside here you got your ups here as well and again you've got all your usual stuff like task manager or your terminal and also uh, universal search file manager and storage manager and things like that. You've got your applications as well. Let me just show you the task manager here so you can see the actual CPU temperatures A pretty decent 51 Celsius right here. And again, it's working away in the background as well. We have our GPU right here, memory, utilization, used, shared, and also cached. And we also have our network here as well as hard disks and volumes. So you can see here pretty much uh, dormant right now because we're not doing anything but there's the volume. Let me just close that off here and we'll go into the app center. And this is where all of the apps are going to be added here. And these will be added as and when you green release them. And also we have Docker, which we can install, which obviously opens up a lot of opportunities as well. So we've got plenty of options here available and there'll be more added. I'm pretty sure in the up and coming weeks. Now, also what I wanted to show you was the internals of the actual unit as well. So I'm going to undo all of the casing and show you inside so you'll be able to see what you're getting for your money. So if you wanted to upgrade your memory or you just wanted to have a look inside, this is how you're going to go about doing it. You can remove the drives from here and also you'd remove the six screws on the bottom and then you would just pull this apart. Just be very careful here. Try not to damage anything or snag any cables. And I'm just going to separate this a little bit here to try and gain access. It should just pull off here. It's been held on probably by a thermal pad on the actual uh, system drive here, which is making it a little bit more sticky, but it will come apart. There we go. And there you can see the thermal pad right there, which was holding down the system drive. So there is the system drive there with the blue thermal pad on it. That's where your inst installation is of your operating system. And we also have the RAM slots there where you can add more RAM in if you wish. 
and we've got our drive base here which obviously will be covered once this cover goes back on you've got your wi-fi card on there as well and this is where your ram is right here so you can upgrade this up to 64 gigabytes of storage and i'll remove the board here so you can see on the other side where the cpu is and stuff like that so a pretty good uh, build design on this particular model so let me try and uh, remove this board here this should just lift up because I've removed the screws and there we go it is lifting up so I can just tilt this up so you can see underneath here there is a little Wi-Fi antenna cable here which you need to be a little bit careful of so I'll just put, pry this up there we go and there you got that heat sink there with copper pipes on it to keep the CPU nice and cool and you can also see all the other components there so a pretty well nice designed board here Anyway, I think that's going to be about it. If you want to see more on this, let me know in the comments section below. This is the DXP480T Plus by Ugreen. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Whether you're tier one, tier two or tier three, I really do appreciate it. Also, I'll sure catch you on the Discord server for a chat or I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.